Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week I'm going to be doing a little bit of a departure from the kind of content that I normally show on this channel, and I'm going to be talking about scalers for retro gaming consoles. So for those of you guys that are not as familiar, there's a whole bunch of products out there on the market that can take uh, video inputs from your retro consoles and um, scale it up so that it can be used on a modern display with as little lag as possible and with the highest possible quality. And these these products vary considerably in terms of quality and price. Um, the Retro Tink line of products are outstanding. There's the open source scan converter, and there's others that are scheduled to be out on the market in the next couple of months to maybe about a year. Um, but what I'm going to be talking about today is a DIY project where you can make your own scaler for retro gaming consoles that does really incredible stuff and doesn't really cost all that much money. So, so yeah, what we're going to be doing is making a GBS control. And so this is a hack of the GBS 8200, which you can see here. These are easy to find on Amazon. And in fact, all of these parts are pretty easy to find on Amazon. Um, and with the right kind of uh, modifications, you can make this into something really incredible. So today I'm going to show you how to build one of these things, and uh, I'll do a brief demonstration on how it works as well. All right, so let's get to it. But first, let me take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Now, PCBWay has long been my favorite manufacturer of PCBs because of their high quality and fast delivery times. But now they're offering even more services, including custom CNC machining and high quality 3D printing. It's really amazing how much you can accomplish with your custom projects with just one source. So please check out the link in the description below and give PCBWay a try. Okay, now back to this video. Okay, so before we start with the hardware, the first thing we've got to do is focus on software. So this hack uh, for creating the GBS control, it centers around this device right here, which is the ESP8266. So this is a Wi-Fi module that's, I believe, also combined with a microcontroller, and it's a pretty powerful tool that's used in a lot of different projects. Um, so what you have to do is basically um, flash the GBS control software onto this little module here. And that's something I'm not gonna cover in detail. It's kind of outside the scope of what I wanna do uh, in, this, in this video, which is to show you how to solder up and get a GBS control hooked up. Um, however, there is a very detailed guide um, on the GBS control wiki. And then also Bob from Retro RGB has also made a good video outlining what you need to do. The reason why I'm not going into it is because there's a lot of different versions of this. And so if um, I show you what I'm doing here, it may not necessarily apply to the chips that you purchase. So let me go ahead and just flash the software. So when things are working correctly, you'll see that the blue LED on your um, Wi-Fi module will be blinking like this and you'll see a progress bar. And then it'll hold like this when it's doing a hard reset. And that means that it's compiled successfully. All right, so the first thing we've got to do to the GBS 8200 is that we have to remove some components. So namely, we've got to remove these three potentiometers here because um, these values are going to be controlled digitally and not by the pots. So let's go ahead and do that with the desoldering gun. All right, so now that those potentiometers are out of the way, we're just gonna take a little piece of scrap wire that I have here, and I'm gonna just solder um, it to both ends of each of these potentiometers. So we're just basically reconnecting from here to here, and this is ground, we can just ignore these ground points. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna install is an external clock generator. And this helps with potential issues with screen tearing that you might get if this piece is not installed. You don't have to have it, but it certainly will make the experience a lot easier. So what I like to do here is I have a bit of Gorilla double-sided adhesive, and I'm gonna just place that right on top of the heat sink here. And then from there, we're gonna solder five wires to various points, and I'll kind of go over that in detail.
right, so now the clock generator is installed, so I'm just going to show you all the different connections that I made here. Um, so first are these two connections here going from the end of this capacitor and this pad over here to both sides of this filter capacitor on the board. And I believe that this is just supplying power um, to this chip. Then we've also got a pin going from this clock zero all the way down to the leg of this chip right here. I'm not sure if this is showing up on camera, but it's the furthest one on the right. So that makes it actually rather simple to solder to. Even though it's small, you just have to come at it from the right hand side and you can get it. <clears throat> and then finally, we've got two wires going from SDA and SCL over here, and they're going over to two places here on, on this chip. And again, if you look at the wiki um, for the GBS control, all these points are, are shown and highlighted, but um, I just figured I'd go over it here to make it easier. All right, so now that the clock module is done, we're going to go ahead and install the ESP chip. And I'm going to put some double-sided tape on it and position it right about here. And just like before, we have about five wires that we need to connect it to. All right, so just like before, we've got five connections that we did over here. Uh, so three of them are related to data. So one is the debug pin, which is here. And you'll notice that I installed that first because this thing just gets in the way and you have no access to this area. So I installed it and it's the second pin from the left over here, or actually facing you a second pin from the, from the right. And so from there, that goes to pad D6 on the ESP chip. Uh, this might be different depending on your version of the ESP chip, but at least with the one I have here, it's D6. And then you are also going to be uh, tapping into SCL and SDA over here. That's the, the uh, red and white wires, respectively. And then those go to pads D1 and D2 on the ESP chip. So those are the three data lines. And then these final two connections here, that's just power and ground. So I have ground connected up to a convenient little pad over here. And then power is coming straight from here. You'll notice that there's like a little plus sign here that tells you that this is the positive terminal and that connects straight up to the jack. So when you power up the GBS control, you're also gonna be simultaneously powering up the ESP chip. And so that just goes here on the underside. All right, so uh, I also have to make one final modification. And so you can see here, there's an area where there's jumper wires. And so this needs to be bridged. And so you can do that either by like physically installing one of those little jumper header things that, that, that bridge these together. Unfortunately, I don't have one on me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bridge it with some solder right here. Okay. So those two connections are now bridged, and we're basically all set with the GBS control, uh, apart from a few other add-ons that I like to do to make it even better. Okay, so one of the last steps that we have to do is to make it easy to connect RGB-enabled devices to the GBS control. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this female SCART connector, and we're gonna use it in combination with this little harness that connects directly to the GBS control. And this came with the kit, so that makes things very convenient. Uh, so you can see that I've already wired a whole bunch of wires um, onto the SCART connector, just tying them all together. And those are all grounds. And so um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description that has the pinout for the SCART head. And so you basically just have to match that and tie all of these pins together, and that's all going to go to ground, which is this black pin over here. 
And then for RGB, you need a source of RGB and then sync. So I'm going to go ahead and wire all of that onto this connector now. Okay, so these connections take care of video and ground, but we're also going to go ahead and add audio as well. So the left and right channel audio pins are right over here, and again, they're also mentioned on the pinout. So we're going to go ahead and solder some wires on these ends, and then the other ends, we're going to hook that up to a stereo headphone jack. Okay, so for the last little bit of soldering, we have a little USB mini wire here. And normally this is used to power a VGA to HDMI uh, converter that you also can use with the GBS control. Uh, so normally this powers to something external, like a cell phone charger or something like that, but you can actually tie this into the power supply of the GBS control, so that way you have one single power supply that runs everything. So to do that conveniently, what I did was I cut the USB cable at a certain length, and then I exposed the, the power wire, which is this red one here, and then this guy here is the ground, the white. So now all I'm going to do is just take this other connector, which came with the GBS control kit, and solder them together. All right, so the last little things we gotta do is just finish assembling the case. So you can see I've already put the GBS control inside of the 3D printed case. And uh, so to attach the RGB harness, you simply plug it straight in right here. Just like that, nice and easy. And here's our sound. So we're gonna go ahead and wire that in, or screw that in rather. So that just goes like that. Okay. And at this point, we're basically good to go. We just got to power up the VGA to HDMI converter. And then this wire routes through here, and the power comes in here from the from the top. And now finally, we just got to get the the lid to close this thing up. And there we go, all done. So to use it, basically, you can plug in any kind of uh, SCART enabled device through here. And the audio is going to come out through here and feed in. So HDMI will output both audio and video. And then, of course, if you want to do component, what you can do is you feed component straight into the jacks over here. And then you take the stereo sound from that system. And instead of plugging in over here, you plug it in right over here. And you'll get audio and video through HDMI. All right, so now that this thing is done, let's go ahead and put it through its paces and see how it performs. All right, so we're back and I've taken my NES, which is modified for RGB, and I'm plugging it straight into that RGB port and using the GBS control with that. And as you guys can see, I mean, the image looks really nice. I know this isn't as good as a direct capture, and if you want that kind of in-depth analysis of the GBS control, then I highly recommend Bob's video on retro RGB uh, that ov goes over the GBS control in a lot of detail. But hopefully, you know, just seeing this uh, quick image here gives you an idea of how exceptionally good uh, content can look in 1080p on the GBS control. Uh, so let me go ahead and switch over to component video, and I'll show you an Xbox that I have plugged in that way. 
Okay, so here's the Xbox, and uh, I just went to the main screen here where it tells you to change the time. But again, it's in 1080p, and this is coming in through the component side of things, and you can see that it looks exceptionally well. And, you know, there's a couple of features on the GBS control that are pretty amazing, like the, um, the de-interlacing options look really good. Uh, it can very quickly switch from 480i to 240p, so that's really critical for things like PlayStation and Sega Saturn. So, so yeah, overall, I think it's an incredibly powerful uh, scaler. It's not going to be on the same scale as, say, you know, the RetroTINK 5X or the OSSC, but still, it's really good, and, and considering that, you know, you can get all the parts and put it together pretty inexpensively, I think it's a great option, and it's really a fun project to build. Okay guys, so if you like this kind of content, then um, consider subscribing to the channel, and I have projects like this and repairs and mods that come out every Friday. And of course, if you've got consoles that you want repaired or modified, you can always contact me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.